All right, exercise one for the semester in our freeware version of the class. I'm going to go to, let's do it through modules, unit two. And unit two is going to be all about what I call digital image mining. It's about finding good image resources online that you can use, like finding good minerals from the earth, and then compositing it with layers into our own unique artwork. So it has three components to it. Let's look at the introduction. This is basically an introduction page I have for every unit that is a substitute for me introducing it and telling you about it. The only deliverable for this is the actual project, which will be a graded discussion. And we're going to look at past instructor and student examples. There's, we have the option to review past tutorials on this skill through the YouTube art uh, NLC Arts Lab YouTube page and this video along with everything we do for this exercise will be added onto that page. So we work on it in real time. So what is a line art jumble? Think of a coloring book, right? And now pretend you took an exacto knife and you cut out all the black lines from that coloring book. It would take you quite a bit of time depending on what the content was. Sometimes those lines are nice and chunky and thick Sometimes they're really intricate and thin. Sometimes they're a mix of both, right? But what we're using for this is what's called line art. And as an asset, line art is always bitmapped. A bitmap means it's either empty or there. It's either a one or a zero. So in visual terms, that means it's either a black pixel or a white pixel. You will find line art that has been made into grayscale and makes the edges smoother. It's called anti-aliasing. Any of that will work, right? Even if we find line art that's a different color, like blue or red, we're going to learn how to turn it into black line art. So that everything we use to composite together will be black line art. Once it's finished as black line art, we will save it, have a finished result, and then I will give you the option of adding color, like you see here. And so then you can have a black version and a color version, and as many versions as you want. This one was of He-Man line art. This is of Garfield line art. This is of Kelvin and Hobbes. I like that one. Lord of the Rings. All right, so you'll see from these examples, um, there's not one theme that's required. A lot of these are actually based on banned books. Maybe some of them you know. Lord of the Rings, Hunger Games, uh, one called The Hate You Give, which is a more recent banned book. But others are just based on things they like, right? Newborn stuff, Marvel Comics. If you ever want to see past videos for it, you just go to our art club or our YouTube page and you look for exercise one, and you'll see exercise one from previous semesters. So here we have exercise one with freeware from the spring 2023 semester. Here we have it using Adobe products. I did something with a cat that semester. All right, now let's go to next. This is the graded discussion. You'll see that two points are possible. You'll see it's due September 6th. And if you hover over that, it will show you the time it's due, which will always be right before midnight on that day. The goal is to get this worked on today, introduce it, get started, and then finish it up at the beginning of next class, which because of the Labor Day holiday is September 6th. We follow the course outline. If you turn it in late, it will show up as late. If it's past midnight on September 6th, but you can still get full credit. That's the difference between an exercise and an assignment, right? So this gives you a chance to get used to those deadlines. All right, I give pretty exhaustive directions <laughs> for the exercises. I won't do this for every assignment because I'm also demonstrating it with the videos. But I, I tried to document step-by-step -step instructions, but in order to do that, I had to already pick a theme. So this theme was on banned books. But you can see I have in the title here favorite cartoon theme because that's the theme I used last semester. These are always just suggestions for you. I've tried mandating them before. Doesn't work for everybody. 
I've tried leaving it completely open-ended for every assignment. That doesn't work for everybody. So my suggestion is this. Unless you have a better reason, a better theme that you're interested in, go ahead and use one of the suggested ones because they work. Right? The most important thing is that sign that's up on our whiteboard. It's just to get started. So don't spend a lot of time waiting for the perfect theme to come to you. Right? So if we go with the banned book theme, we have some examples here. This is a list from our library of books that are challenged to their collection every year through community groups. And there are public uh, indec indecency challenges. And so far, the library has kept all of these in circulation. But they're always having to fight for them. And so you might be surprised by some of the books that are challenged, right? So Animal Farm is a great book, especially if you like, you know, beheading pigs. It's one of the best. The Sun Also Rises, Gone with the Wind. They all are interesting and problematic in their own interesting ways, right? So what's nice about looking at this list instead of just a list of books is each of these has a story behind it and some images. So for instance, if you did Lord of the Rings, it might be interested to research why is Lord of the Rings been challenged. Because it's not just our library, it's like all libraries. And it's because it has magic in it. And it's because it has the smoking of, what do they call it? Something weed in it. I forget what the weed is called, but it's a particular type of weed. And so maybe you want to use that to inform the, the imagery you use for that jumble. Or Lord of the Flies. Maybe they're books you read in high school. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pick and find what I call digital mining, at least five relevant images that go with your chosen theme. So in the morning theme, I chose a Hawaiian shirt theme because that's what I'm wearing today. And I haven't thought enough far enough ahead. So I'm going to go with my, my kitten, my tuxedo cat. I'm going to do a tuxedo cat theme right, for this. So what do I have to do next? I don't know why I'm scrolling so much. What I'm going to do next is find ways to get line art. And this is my way of introducing them to you. One way that's kind of fun is using AutoDraw. This is a Google product. And when you use AutoDraw, you can select black, but I'm going to leave it as blue, which is the default, because I'll show you how to change it to black later. And I'm going to click on the AutoDraw pencil, the magic sparkly pencil. And my cat's five months old. I'm going to draw a quick picture. It actually can be a really bad picture. And I'm just using my mouse. I don't even have a tablet. If you want to get a tablet, you can get it from the back. You just need an ID with your name. OK, and I draw it, and I say, that's terrible line art. And remember, you're not allowed to actually create your, line, your own line art for this. But what the magic pencil does is it says, did you mean this? <laughs> did you mean this? Did you mean this? Did you mean this? And what's great is Google actually paid the illustrators for this project um, for a complete buyout of their, of their work, which means Google owns this work fully and in perpetuity. And then Google did that so that they can open license it. So all of this, all of this clip art of line, line art is Creative Commons open, which means I can use it for any purpose. And you can use it for any purpose. It's not quite the same as public domain, but it's the same as public domain for these reasons, right? So if I wanted to make a calendar of different animal line art heads, I could just take this image and sell a calendar. I don't think anyone would buy it, but that's what Creative Commons opens means. Now, what's going to get me close to my cat? That one's kind of cool. In fact, it might be cool enough and wonky enough because they paid lots of different illustrators who have different line art styles that I want to use it, and it might change my theme a little bit. Maybe I'll do cats and foxes. I have a fox that lives in my backyard. So I'll do kittens and vixens. Ooh, that's nice. So now what do I do? This is to teach you a really important skill for the semester. When you're digital image mining, you are not at the mercy of however that image is coded online. If you can see it on a screen, you can capture it as an image. 
The limitation is it's going to be at the screen resolution of that screen. So most digital artists I know have a monitor that is actually an LED TV screen, right? Because those are and sometimes 4K. I don't, but that's fine. I'm a teacher. So what's nice about a 4K screen is if I look this up and I do a screen grab of it, which is what I'm going to teach you to do, which is here, that means the resolution of it's going to be higher than when I grab it on this smaller screen, right? If it's on a 75-inch TV, it's going to be a higher resolution. These are actually vector shapes. So no matter how big your screen, they're always going to fill the resolution. So how do we grab it from this screen? As long as our images are at least a thousand pixels, we can use them for this project. Okay. So for Max, which is what we're using, this is the most complicated keyboard shortcut I would need you to know. And it is Command Shift 4. Command Shift 4 is what's called a targeted screen grab. So if I press Command with my thumb, then use my, I'm right handed, but this is with my left hand. Command with my thumb, Shift with my ring finger, and then with my pointer finger, reach up and click the four. Look what happens to my cursor. It turns to a very intimidating looking crosshairs, right? And it actually has pixel counts next to it for its position on the screen. And then if I click and drag, I barely got the edge, but that works as long as I'm not cutting it off. And if I have my sound turned on, which all of you will have turned off, <laughs> I will get a nice uh, screen grab of what I drew. It's going to show up in the corner here while it's processing. And then once it's finished, it's going to appear on my desktop as a PNG. Not sure why it's taking so long, but there it goes. So that's always a, a PNG. You can take it from anything you see on your screen. It can be the middle of a video, right? It can be protected content from a website that does not want you to take it. You can always do a screen grab. Doesn't mean you should but you can, right? Why is this so helpful for professionals, especially in marketing? Because you have to work with clients in marketing and clients are terrible at getting you the image assets you need. So sometimes you need to go find and get them yourself, right? All right, the limitation of it is this is no longer a vector, which means when I zoom in on it, it's at screen resolution. So screen grabs will always be limited by the screen you are grabbing it from. So screen grabs on your phone aren't great because your phone's so small, right? But that works fine for, for phone applications. So let's try another one. They didn't like my fox so much. Let me try a different kind of cat. I tend to overdraw for this program. It's meant for, for pretty bad drawing. <laughs> so there we go. There's that. There's that. Is that I kind of like this one, the jitteriness. So let me practice again. Let's make a screen grab. How can I make it a little bit better quality this time? I can use Command Plus to zoom in and make it as big on the screen as I can, as long as it's not cropped off. Right. So Command Plus and Command Minus. And then Command Shift 4, screen grab. We'll go to the desktop. It's blue, but I'll turn it into black. What's another way that I can get line art both of these ways it's going to be line art that i'm actually allowed to use these are creative common uh, creative commons open solutions and this is one of my favorite sites in the world and there are other sites like it but this is just one i use a lot it's called pixabay it is a curated image search site and i've curated some of the images for them and I've donated some of the images where artists donate their, their own images that they have the rights to with a Creative Commons license, which they call a Pixabay license, which is basically the same as public domain. It means as soon as you donate that image, you're never getting it back. Right? And anyone can use it for any reason. And if you're okay with that, you donate. If you donate 10 images, you don't have to see their ads anymore. So that's nice. So I've done that. But what you do need to do is you do need to log in, which is free, because then you'll be able to download their, their highest resolution elements. So if I look for a tuxedo cat, which is just one of those black and white cats, 
Just like a Google image search, I'll get lots of images. Some of them are really pretty cool. But these have all been curated.